Welcome! Wanna get good? No problem! We'll check out how to best control your plane, basic air combat tactics, energy fighting, boom and zoom, turn fighting and lots of other stuff. Rule zero, stay with the team and support each other. With that said, let's go! This is a plane. These are elevators. They make your plane go up and down. Bind W to pitch down and S to pitch up. Then bind A and D to roll left and right. This will give you the ability to pull hard turns and roll fast. Don't know if that's the default by now, it wasn't in the old days. Q and E should control your rudder. That'll be your left and right. Accelerate with shift and decelerate with left control. Small guns on the left mouse, large caliber guns on another mouse button and zoom on the right mouse button. Done. That's enough to get you started. Now, let's check out some basic principles. Air combat mostly is about energy. Potential energy or kinetic energy. The higher you're up in the air, the more potential energy you have. The faster you go, the more kinetic energy you have. Speed can be traded for altitude and altitude can be traded for speed. So, both energy types are interchangeable. There are some rules to air combat. The first one is Always try to get the energy advantage over your opponent. Be faster or fly higher or preferably both. Am I right, Heinz? Jawohl! There basically are two types of fighter planes. Some are made for energy fighting, some are made for boom and zoom, and some are made for turning. That's terribly simplistic, but it'll do for now. Energy fighters like the 109 or the Yak-3 rely on good acceleration and high agility. They don't lose a lot of energy while turning and thus are able to keep the pressure on the opponent. In a sustained fight, the energy fighter usually wins, because it doesn't need to sacrifice altitude to emergency turn faster or to regain speed. You can use the S key to pull hard and tight turns to get your guns on target. Boom and zoom fighters like the P-47D usually are more heavy but have sleek airframes and powerful engines. They are built for high dive speeds, lots of control in the process and are optimized to convert speed back into altitude. While going fast, your time on target is small most of the time. So boom and zoomers usually pack a hefty punch like the ZP-47 with its 850 cals. The basic tactic is to attack from above in a fast dive and then extend away in a shallow climb to regain your energy. Use your mouse to gently maneuver your plane. The emphasis lies on flying in a mostly straight line. Because of their weight, pure boom and zoom planes lose a lot of energy while turning, so just try not to. B and Z is hit and run. Turn fighters, like many Japanese planes, are best for sustained turning. They usually are slower, very agile at low speeds and excel at low altitudes. You need to be proficient in defensive flying if you want to make them work. One thing applies to all of them. The faster you go, the more drag occurs. At a certain point in a dive, for example, you start to approach the flat top of the curve. That's where you start to waste energy. Diving onto an opponent 3000 meters below you would be an example of wasted energy. You lose a lot more potential energy than your kinetic energy potential could regain afterwards while climbing. With that said, here's rule number two. Find out what the type of the plane is you're going to fly and then exploit its advantages. Don't turn fight in a pure boom and zoom plane like the TA-152C and don't boom and zoom in a pure turn fighter like the Zero. There also are some boom and zoom fighters which are acceptable energy fighters at the same time. An example would be some of the P-51 variants. Right in the middle sit the 109s and the Yaks, which are very versatile but heavily rely on your piloting skill. I guess you got it by now. In the end everything is about energy conservation. So dividing planes into turn fighters, boom and zoomers and energy fighters is just a superficial categorization. Which brings me to rule number 3. Your main goal is to drain the opponent's energy. Their plane turns worse than yours? Try to drag them into a turn fight. It turns better? 
Boom and zoom or try to take the fight into the vertical if your plane specs are up to it. Look at it this way. Your goal is to get your nose pointed towards the enemy plane. Your opponent tries the same. You need to maneuver more intelligently than he does to achieve that goal. With that in mind, here's rule number 4. Make it as hard as possible for your opponent to move his nose into your direction. If you can force an early Spitfire into the vertical or a P-47D into a turn, they are prone to lose a lot of energy. And enemies in a low energy state, like low and slow, are an easy pick, either for you or your teammates. Try to cut corners and force your opponent to do more maneuvering than you do. Less movement is more. Grab any chance to regain energy, like flying leveled out or gaining altitude. To identify these opportunities, you need to be very well informed. Et voila, here's rule number 5. Know your enemy. You absolutely need to know what you're facing to apply the principles we just learned. So, study the planes at the battle rating you're at. Sometimes there's enough time during a match to quickly open a browser and google some stuff about a certain plane you're facing for the first time. This usually applies if you took rule 6 into account. Always climb. Even in a so-called low altitude fighter. Most still perform well between 3000 and 6000 meters. So that's where you want to start an engagement. You can't trade altitude for speed if you're mowing the lawn. Don't laugh. This behavior can be observed at almost any battle rating. You also can't bait a high altitude fighter down to lower altitude if there's no leeway. You just be an easier target. So climb. Always. Also, always keep rule number 7 in mind. Don't shoot too early. Set your gun convergence to somewhere between 300 and 400 meters. Don't try to shoot at planes further away if you're not absolutely sure what you're doing. Convergence is the spot where the bullets of your wing mounted guns meet. It's also important to set the convergence on planes with nose mounted guns, because this value also sets the vertical alignment. Bullets fly in an arc. Vertical alignment set at 400 meters for example, makes sure the bullets you fired cross your reticle at this distance. Everyone has other preferences, so try which values work best for you. We'll get into more shooting tips later. But now, listen to rule number 8. Don't get greedy. Especially not in a head-on. In this case I face an XP-50. Its engines are more fragile than Adolf's ego. Das war ein Befehl. Fire a short salvo to damage or distract the enemy and then dodge. It's important to dodge below the opponent's nose, which makes it harder for him to follow. I also didn't chase him down to low altitude. Both of his engines were smoking, he was done. I took this choice because of rule number 9. Minimize your time on target. The longer you spend chasing, the more you're susceptible for getting shot down. To get a good shot off, you most likely are extremely focused while doing your approach which makes overlooking a potential threat more likely. That's what happened to me here. I got greedy and spent too much time on target. Wouldn't have happened to Ace Günther, hab ich recht? Ah, ich weiß auch nicht, was du dir dabei dacht hast, du Seppel. Rule number 10. Seek the deflection shot. This means you're not approaching from the 6 o'clock position, but rather from the side, top or from below. In general terms, zero deflection means the target stands still in the middle of your reticle. Your bullets are likely going to bounce from this position and it's hard to hit the vital parts. Greater deflection means a better angle on your target. Hit from the top to shred wings and engines, hit from the side to rip apart the fuselage. Good targets also are the elevators of fighters. They are completely crippled without them and 99% dead. How to get the best angle? That's what rule number 11 is for. The best target is the unsuspecting target. No honor and chivalry in air combat. Pick the slowest, most unaware target and shoot it down. One less threat to worry about. Awareness is king. Without it, you're dead. So hold C and look around with your free camera to map the activities in the sky around you. Also, skill up your crew to get all the information you need as early as possible. Rule 12. 
shoot in short, precise bursts. Don't waste ammo. Right, Heinz? <laughs> Here's rule number 14. Pick your fights. If you're in a suboptimal position and you get engaged, it's often better to just run. Fly towards your teammates or trade some altitude for speed to extend away if possible. Then start to climb again once you're safe and return to fight under better conditions. And don't be hesitant to break off your attack. If you're diving on an enemy and he starts turning and wobbling long before you're in range to fire your guns, maybe it's better to break off, regain altitude, reset and then fly another attack. He'll have less energy now than on your first pass and will be an easier target. And that's it. Like and subscribe if you found all this to be helpful. Thumbs down if you'd rather enlist as a glide bomber than have to watch this video again. Drop me a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs>